Okay, good afternoon everybody. I'm Bart from GiantScaleNews.com, your host and chief admin at the website. Uh, this is our final video for our build of the one-third scale World Model Super Cub that we started a couple of months ago. And uh, we're just going to go over the goods, the bads, and um, wrap things up and move on to the flying and enjoying part of the build. So, um, real quick, the model went together pretty quickly uh, when I was working on it, when I was able to work on it. You saw in the build thread um, a lot of the details that went into building it. And for the most part, I'm very happy with it. For the money, it's a very big airplane. It's really well built. There's plenty of evidence online that you can find that shows uh, it flies really well. And um, people have flown this with as little as 50 cc. And I think I've seen as much as 110, possibly even 120 cc. The engine I ended up using is a BME 102, which pulls it great. Uh, I don't know if the wheels go around even one full turn before it takes off. Um, it's not super fast even with that. I could probably prop it up a little bit, get it to go a little faster, but it's not really an aerodynamic speed demon to begin with. Uh, the power's mostly there from towing batters, which is why I built it in the first place. So just looking at different parts of the, the project real uh, quick. The windows come molded and for the most part they fit okay. Uh, I'd recommend that when you trim them to fit in their individual spots, you kind of trim close so they sit into their spot a little bit better. If I had to do this again, if I wasn't doing it for a review, I'd probably buy some clear ABS plastic, cut it to the right size, and just glue it in place flush on the back side of these cutouts. The molded windows don't fit, they don't fit great. They fit well enough. Um, I have to apologize, I did kind of a sloppy job with the windows. Um, but I'd recommend trimming them relatively close to the lines for the cutouts so they do fit in uh, as best as possible. The front windshield, I just put it into place pretty much the way I got it. I had to use a heat gun up at this top corner to make this radius tighten up and sit nicely against the, uh, the fuselage. That's why it sits there and it has a nice sharp corner because I used a heat gun, a, a little piece of cotton cloth, and I just molded it into place as I was heating it up and that made it fit great. If you wanted to trim the front to make the windshield stand a little bit more uh, steeply, the way a, a Super Cub really does, um, there's plenty of material here and I think this radius up in the front where it's molded would work okay. So you'd have to trim the front a little bit, stand it up, bring it in at the front a little bit and it would look a little bit more scale. Um, as far as the controls go, there's plenty of room in here to mount the radio stuff, lots of room. Um, the push rods I mentioned in the build thread weren't really usable so the threads were not quite deep enough and when you put them into the nylon hardware that they provide it didn't really give you a feeling of confidence like they would stay put. So what I ended up doing was I bought a steel rod from McMaster Car which is the right diameter to make 440 threads. I used a 440 uh, die to cut the threads and then I wrapped the whole thing uh, all the way from threaded end to threaded end with uh, three millimeter carbon fiber tubing which happens to have just about the perfect diameter inside for this rod. And because this is a pultruded tube which means it's not woven or wrapped or anything it's just straight fibers with uh, a tendency at the ends to split um, I wrapped each end with carbon fiber cloth or not cloth but uh, carbon fiber fiber strands and then glued that so that the ends can't split. So it made for a pretty nice push rod. And what I ended up doing was uh, replacing the wing push rods for the flaps and ailerons with uh, titanium turnbuckle styles, either from Hangar 9 or from Red Wing. That's in the build thread already. In the tail, I made all custom push rods using steel rod, carbon fiber tube, and then a combination of ball ends and quick links. And that worked out really well especially because I can make everything custom exactly the size as I want it. The directions that come with the plane basically tell you the steps and uh, in what order to do them. It doesn't give a huge amount of detail. Uh, I should note that the little bags of hardware that come with the kit are numbered. So if you go through the assortment of bags they give you with the different little bits of hardware, there are numbers that correspond to these steps. Some of the things are a little confusing um, and it just took trial and error in a couple of cases to get things uh, the way they ought to be. So again, the directions tell you the basic steps. There's a couple of details that they could have done a little bit better with. But now that we have the build thread, uh, now that I've built it, if you come by GiantScaleNews.com, if you're watching this video, chances are you know where to find it. Uh, you could ask me and I'll help you out however I can. Um, 
So directions are okay. The website, we can help you along. You'll get it done. Uh, the wheels that came with it are perfectly fine. Uh, a couple of you guys at the site said, hey, you have to use PR Bush wheels. So I contacted them. I didn't want the giant size ones. Uh, that would be full Tundra tires for a third scale plane. So I got the ones that are Tundra tires for a quarter scale plane. They're eight and three quarter inches. I found, um, I mean, they look fine. They look proportionally fine. Um, I have to keep a lot of air in them. Otherwise they get a little squirrely. They roll on the, uh, the rims. But so far they've held up beautifully. And uh, the little bit of extra cushioning that you get from a big balloon tire has gone really well with the landing gear. So the original tires are fine. I'll probably keep these with me as a backup in case I blow one of these so I can keep flying. But um, I mean the bush tires are definitely cool. As far as the landing gear goes, I should have given the stock landing gear more of a shot to work. I started messing with it immediately. I wasted at least a month making my own um, gear with these functioning bungees. and. It's worked fine. I don't have time to keep playing with it, so I picked up a set of the Robart third scale uh, Cub landing gear. Functional bungees, they're really scale looking. Uh, the ones I bought are in horrible condition, um, but they were the only ones I could find. So I'm gonna clean them up and put them on here. And these other ones I'll keep as a backup. Um, but the, scale, the landing gear that comes with the kit, they probably would have worked fine. I should have given them more of a shot. Um, but I went ahead and started messing with them. So I'd say give them a shot, fly with them a little bit. If they start to wiggle loose from where the wires are binding the different pieces of uh, steel rod together, you know, you could deal with it then. Also, let's see, what else is there? Uh, like I said, they've flown these with up to 120 cc engines. I've got the 102. I did use some aluminum angle behind the firewall to uh, lock it in place. We're gonna be using this for banner towing. So it's gonna be flying around with uh, weight hanging off the back, a little more power up front, so it's going to be a lot of vibration, extended flight times, so um, I just thought a little extra reinforcement in the firewall would be helpful. Uh, last but not least, the wing struts are definitely functional, and uh, they all went together just fine. Um, the spot where the spot where the lift strut attaches to the bottom of the wing has balsa. So when you push the lift strut into place and tighten it up, it compresses the balsa. This is a problem in the tail also, but real quick with the wings, you can see here that I cut out the balsa and replaced it with a nice hard birch plywood pad. I was able to tighten the struts into place and they've held really well. They're not slipping or anything when I'm flying. I'd highly recommend you do something like that. This spot that I made, I think is a quarter, uh, an inch and a quarter by one inch, probably a little bigger than it needs to be. Um, and I used eighth inch balsa, which is just a slight bit thicker than whatever the millimeter dimension is on the balsa wood, but it's fine. And uh, it's outboard of the engine, so even if I had a smoke system, it's not gonna get uh, saturated with oil or smoke or whatever, so um, I haven't bothered to paint it. Maybe I will in the future, but right now I'm short on time. We're all getting ready for the summer flying season. Joe Nall's coming up. So I just replaced those pads after I flew it the first time and saw I mean, obviously the balsa wasn't going to hold real well, but it was worse than I expected. So um, I replaced that with plywood. It's been perfect ever since. And also with these wings, these lift struts, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but if you take out these two uh, bolts that are holding the top side of the lift struts in place, there's the way these jury struts are mounted, it can all pivot and lay flat on the wing if you want to save a little space uh, when you're transporting this. You don't have to leave the struts completely bolted into place uh, the whole time. The other spot where they have soft balsa where it's a structural element and it crushes because you're trying to clamp on it is back in the tail where the the tail brace wires attach. So there's a fitting on top and a fitting on the bottom and you're through bolting it through balsa. So what you have to do is just perforate the balsa above and below the flying surface or of the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer surface, perforate it with uh, a pin or something and soak it with some thin CA so that the wood hardens up really nicely and then you can clamp down on that spot without worrying about the balsa giving and crushing underneath. Okay, so that concludes our build. Um, I'm gonna have this at Joe Nall. If anybody sees it, if you have any questions, if you wanna fly it, just stop me and say, hey Bart, when are you gonna fly the Cub again? I wanna try it. Uh, people have won IMAC contests with this plane. Um, it does great knife edge, surprisingly enough. 
it takes off in almost no distance and the flaps actually uh, do a great job of uh, increasing lift. So you can play with that, it's fun. Um, for the money, I think it's a great airplane. It's not 100% scale, but it's close enough. You obviously know it's a Cub, you know it's a Super Cub with the cowl the way it is. Um, just about anything in the 50cc to 100cc and even more uh, does great. A G62 would be awesome. There's a lot of them flying out there with that. And so, I'm giving it a two thumbs up. It's a good airplane. Uh, not expensive. The build quality, uh, a lot of attention to detail in some places, not so much in others. But it's all totally manageable and it's a great flying airplane. And it is big. I mean, when it's here on the bench and you're looking for something, you're constantly like, you know, looking under it, over it. So, once this thing is off the bench, and you go to work on something else, you're like, holy cow, I can see the bench again. All right, so that's our build thread. That's a wrap. It was a good experience. I'm really looking forward to taking this thing on the road and uh, towing banners with it. It's been a lot of fun so far. Um, Earl goes by Pistolera at the website, helped me fly it the first time, and he wasn't done advancing the throttle. And literally, I don't think the wheels went around once. Uh, and it was off the ground. So everybody was just kind of like, wow, that's a fun airplane. So, and then once you get the hang, you know, of coordinating your turns with rudder and aileron, once you get the feel for how much aileron you need to get it to roll into a turn aggressively, um, it's a piece of cake to fly. All right, so that's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed the build. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in a couple weeks down at Joe Nall and uh, maybe at some other events during the flying season into the fall. All right, thanks again for watching. Thank you to uh, Express Pawn and Gun. That's Pawn Shop Mike's place out in Missouri. He's got three locations. They buy gold. And also to Airborne Models for giving us a deal on the airplane so we could do the review and have it at Joe Null, Null uh, Towing Banners. Um, also, thank you to Decal Dennis for doing a great job. We'll have plenty of pictures. And uh, you'll be able to see all the big graphics that Dennis did. It worked out perfectly and he did a great job modifying the logo. Uh, to get a cub in there. So that was great, Dennis. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And that's the end of our review. So, World Models Third Scale Super Cub. Uh, it's been fun. Thanks for watching.